tell you a story about a guy named Leroy. Leroy was at, at his church. And uh, he was there at his church, and, and the pastor was preaching. And, well, good old Leroy, he, he kind of dozed off a little bit. You know what I mean. Well, the, me- the message was going on and on. The sermon was going on. And he finally came to and realized that he was not prepared to give an offering. Now, in his church, they took up the offering at the end of the service. So when he was awakened, he realized that he didn't have a whole lot of time to figure out what he was going to do. So he kind of pulled his wallet out and opened that wallet up. And guess what? Not a bit of cash. Well, he put his wallet back in. He grabbed his checkbook and figured he's going to have to write him a check. He's going to write a check for $30 to give an offering plate. Well, when he started to pull that checkbook out, he noticed that the lady to the right of him, she kind of caught wind of what was going on. She gave him the eye. She was staring at him. So he took his checkbook and he kind of put it right in the middle of his open Bible so he couldn't tell what he was doing. He got his pen out and he kind of was, you know, looking down trying to write like this. And she's looking at him and she writes, he writes that check out and, uh, and then uh, she looks back to the preacher and next thing you know, preacher's done. So they get ready to take up the offering, and the, pats, the plates are being passed, and, and he just was whew, puts that check down in there. And right when he put that check down in there, he looks down, and he hadn't read, written a check for $30. He wrote it for $300. Well, now he was in a pickle because he figured it wouldn't be a good idea for him to go down to the ushers and, uh, and get his check back. You know, I mean, they, they would kind of look bad at that, you know. But he had almost cleared his entire checking account out with that one check. So he kind of in his mind, he thought, well, man, we're going to be eating oatmeal and rice for the next week. But he thought, well, it's for a good cause. Well, one thing about old Leroy, and that's this, he was never more awake than at that moment in the service. You know, when we talk about giving and preach about giving it isn't always the easiest topic because I know for some people they say, well, you know I give faithfully so that's really don't apply to me for other people they say well I know I need to give and I'm not giving like I should so I guess I'm just going to feel guilty well we need to bring God's word to bear on our giving growing in generosity is something all of us can do it doesn't matter where we are In our spiritual life, it doesn't matter where we are and how we give. Growing in generosity is for all of us. We all need to grow. Now, last week we looked at how we view our treasure, and we looked at how we use our treasure, and we saw some basic treasure principles related to that. But today we're going to specifically focus on how we give our treasure. How we give our treasure. And as we continue to look at treasure principles from God's Word, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I know I read from Philippians. It seems like Paul talked a lot about offerings. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Philippians, and other places as well. But here in 2 Corinthians, uh, this letter by the Apostle Paul, particularly in chapters 8 and 9, if you read through all of them, he, he's talking about a special offering that's being collected to help other Christians. And so it's from this passage that we continue to draw more principles related to our earthly treasure. We're just looking at one verse today. I hope you have your Bibles open. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. I think right here at the, at the beginning of the message, we need to get, get something clear. Paul says the words, each one. Each one. He's referring to believers. Uh, he's referring particularly to, to baptized believers. People who are a part of his church. And he is making it clear that every believer is to give. 
Everyone who is a follower of Christ is to give. And, and whether it's trying to, to meet your local church's budget, uh, whether it's trying to fund a mission trip, uh, a youth camp trip, or helping the poor, we are all to have a sense of responsibility to do our part. Each one of you, he says. Each one of you. You know, one of the greatest tools that Satan uh, uses against us is to think that what we do or what we don't do really doesn't amount to much. Uh, we are tempted to say, well, will, will, will the church really struggle if, if I don't give or if I don't give that much? And the answer is yes. Of course it will. Because we need everyone to do their part. So if you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you ought to give. But I know some of you right now, I'll try to catch you before you shut down. All right? Are you with me? Some of you are like, here we go. Here we go. Come to church and talk about money. The preacher's going to lay a guilt trip on us. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to give out of guilt. And Paul didn't want people to give out of guilt either. So the question is, how are we to give our treasure, give of our treasure to God? So I want to share four principles, four principles, or really four ways to give, okay? So the first one is this. We are to give mindfully, mindfully. Paul said each one must give as he decided. So giving is actually a decision. Uh, we're not to, uh, to be at church and the offering plate comes by and we go, oh, I better give something. Well, that's not decisive. That's, that's impulsive. And so Paul's talking about giving, giving thoughtfully and pondering what we are to give. Uh, we're not, not supposed to see the offering plate and we start doing math. I never liked math anyways, but... You don't need to do math when the offering plate comes. Well, I got $50 in my wallet, but I got to pay for lunch, so I'm, uh, I guess I can afford to put 20 in there. That's not really a, a decision. That's a last-minute thing. Oh, I better give. Offering plate. Everybody's looking. I've seen people, unfortunately, I've seen people put more thought into uh, how they're going to finance a car, finance a house, buy a computer, even order lunch. Then they thought about how they are to give of their treasure to God. We're to give mindfully. We're not to give casually. We're to give carefully. We're to put some thought into it. How much should I give? How often should I give? Not impulse giving, but purposeful giving. We are not to be accidental givers oh well I'm here they're passing the plate I'll give a little that's not what Paul has in mind you think about what he's saying here each one is to give what he has decided as he has decided there's some thought that must be involved with it but that's only one of the principles I want us to to think about today. The second one is that we are to give passionately because he says there, each one must give as he has decided in his what? In his heart. In his heart. We are to give from the, from the heart. This reminds us that the heart describes the, the whole person. This is in the scriptures when we talk about someone uh, asking Jesus to come into their heart, inviting them into the their heart. We're, we're talking about uh, the whole of a person, particularly when it comes to salvation. Jesus, of course, came to bring salvation that would lead to a changed heart. We could say that salvation is all about the heart. Well, giving is also about the heart because giving is about the gospel. The gospel message is clear. We are spiritually bankrupt before God. We have nothing to bring, nothing to lay before God that would make us uh, uh, right with God. But then God in His grace and in His mercy, He sends His Son, Jesus, 
And this is what he did over 2,000 years ago. He sent his one and only son, who was perfectly righteousness, to provide for us the goodness and rightness that we don't have, but to also take the punishment that we deserve. And that's what he did on the cross. And, and, and the gospel is about a changed heart. So when Paul says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, he's thinking about people who have been given a new heart by God. So what I'm saying here is this. We should not give in such a way that's disconnected from our relationship with God. A changed heart is a prerequisite to giving in the way that God wants us to give. So Paul has in mind not simply giving to meet a need, but to give as an act of love. Something that we are, are passionate about is something that we love. We say, I love you with all my heart, right? Some of you said it this week. I love you with all my heart. So we're not just to give. It's not just some intellectual thing. Well, I just need to get the X's and the O's out and figure out how much I'm going to give. It's not just a mindful decision. It's a, a, it's a decision that comes from the heart. If we're giving correctly, we're giving from a heart filled with God's love, a heart that's burning with God's love. We are giving passionately because it's an extension of our life in Christ. So we are to give mindfully. We are to give passionately. But notice what Paul says. He says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. So that's the, th the third principle. We are to give willingly. We are to give willing, li willingly. Now, now, Paul doesn't actually say give willingly. He, he implies it by giving us what we would call the negative precept. What he says here, he literally says we are not to give out of pain. Not to give out of pain. He has in mind the, the tight-fisted giving of a person who has pondered the gift, but is not really giving uh, from the heart. They haven't decided from the heart. You see, another way that the enemy tempts us when it comes to, to giving is that he kind of leads us to, to this. We go, well, I have this amount of money, and I have this amount of bills. Um, let's see how much I can afford to give. So we write the check, and we, we, we reluctantly put it in the plate, all along thinking, well, I could have really done some good with that money, and not thinking that we're doing what God wants. And Paul basically says, if you're going to give like that, don't. If you're going to give like that, don't. Just don't. Okay? But he also says we're not to give out of compulsion. It's not just a matter of not giving out of out of this, this, this painful, this reluctance, but, but that we're not to give out of compulsion. I said earlier that guilt is a poor motivator. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I want you to understand if you are a believer, and particularly if you are a believer who is here a part of Grace Point Church, then, then there is a sense of responsibility that is attached to our giving. We're, we're responsible. That's all what we've been preaching about, how we're responsible. We're stewards of not just our finances, but every part of who we are to God. So I want you to understand that you're responsible for what you do with the resources, but I'm not preaching to guilt you in to giving. Because God isn't looking for people to grudgingly put their tithe check in the plate because it's their duty. What kind of gift is that? I'm going to go out on a limb here, okay? I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that this week, when we had Valentine's Day, that you did not go to your significant other and say, here you go, honey, I got you some flowers and candy because it's what I'm supposed to do. It's my obligation. Enjoy the gift. I bet no one did that. 
Because that would have been really dumb to do that, first of all, okay? <laughs> but our giving, it's not just a decision. It's a matter of the heart. A heart that is willing to give out of love. That's the kind of giving that God wants us to do. I told you a story about Leroy. Let me tell you a story about a little fellow named Nathan. Nathan was three years old, and he went to church in Union City, Tennessee, a little Baptist church there. And Nathan's parents, you know, they were just wanting their son to understand how church worked and how, how it's important for us to give back a portion of what God has given to us. And so one Sunday, they gave him a dollar. They said, Nathan, here's a dollar. We want you to, to put the dollar. When the offering plate comes around, you just put that dollar in there, and we're going to give that back to God. And so the service went on, the offering began, and the ushers began to pass the plates around. And when the plate moved down to Nathan's pew, parents, the parents held it in front of him and told him to put the dollar in the offering plate. Well, Nathan balked. He's like, mm-mm. And uh, they had a little bit of a wrestling match, but eventually Mama grabbed the dollar and put it down in the offering plate. And it was passed down the pew. Well, suddenly the stillness of the offering was shattered by the voice of a little three-year-old boy named Nathan. And this is what he said. I want my dollar back. I want my dollar back. I want my dollar back. His parents tried to quiet him, but he insisted, I want my dollar back. I want my dollar back. Well, everybody in the congregation at this point, they're about ready to bust out. Okay? And laughter ensued. The musicians had played a wonderful tune, but the only thing that the worshipers heard was, I want my dollar back. Well, eventually, his parents gave, gave him another dollar, and that kind of quieted him down. But as the pastor stepped into the pulpit, he knew that he needed to say something. I mean, he had to say something. And so he looked out at all the smiling faces, and he says, I know it's funny, but we really shouldn't laugh. It may be that Nathan is only voicing the feelings that we all have in our hearts. It might be us that's saying, I want my dollar back. I want my dollar back. See, God wants us not to give reluctantly, grudgingly, give in such a way, so, boy, this is really going to hurt me, God. God wants us to give in such a way that we're willing to, We've decided, and you know, it's, it's a decision in our mind. It's a decision that, that's connected to our heart and is given freely to God. But there's one final principle that we find here. It says, of course, God loves the cheerful giver. So as much as we are to give mindfully, as much as we are, are to give passionately, as much as we are to give willingly, we are to give cheerfully. Instead of reluctantly or because we have to, we're to give with joy. Well, uh, we should be glad to give. Well, how, does a, how is a cheerful giver made? Well, I preached last week about how we view our treasure and how we use our treasure. So this is how a cheerful giver is made. I mean, he has the right view of his stuff. I mean, he understands how God wants him to see his treasure, how God wants him to use his treasure. So he gives cheerfully because he understands that his resources are not his own. They were given to him by God. He understands that his stuff is not eternal. It's just passing away. It's temporary. He understands that, that he has enough if he has the basic necessities, and he's become content with what he has. He has not bought into the materialism of the world. He understands the dangers of riches and has decided that God is more important than his stuff. And that he's more concerned with the greater gain of treasure in heaven than wealth here on this earth. And his hope is in the Lord. And not in false security that money sometimes gives. So the cheerful giver doesn't give grudgingly. The cheerful giver 
gives generously. He knows that what he has, he has received from God. So he only gives back a portion of what is God's to begin with. And he gives how? With an open hand and an open heart. He, he's, he, he, he is ready to give. The person who is a cheerful giver is ready to give. Not just one time, but, but to give regularly to what God is doing in the world. To build God's kingdom. To extend God's kingdom. Through his church. Through missions. He's ready to give of his earthly treasure to the Lord's work for the Lord's glory. So what about we who are here today? What about us? Okay? Because this passage is for us. It's for us. These principles are for us. And we must ask ourselves the question, how are we giving does our giving line up with these principles? When we give, is it a mindful thing? Is it a passionate thing? Does it come from our heart? Is it something that's willing? Or are we having an issue every time it comes to, to give? That there's an issue, there's a reluctance, there's a uh, pain. Or is it that we have joy in our hearts? That we are able to give back to the Lord. Well, we've looked at how we are to give, but I want to finish this message by thinking about one more principle, as it were, in this verse. You might could say it's a promise. It says, God loves the cheerful giver. God loves. So how does God look at our giving? How does God look at our, our giving? Well, we know that God's love for us is not based on what we do, but on what he's done. So what in the world is Paul saying when he says God loves the cheerful giver? Because it sounds a whole lot like the more you give, the more he loves you. But that doesn't fit with the biblical picture, does it? His love towards us is not based on what we can give to Him. His love towards us is based on what He has given to us. So what exactly is Paul? Paul, what are you talking about? God loves the cheerful giver. Well, Paul's speaking particularly about God's favor and God's blessing. That God loves the one who gives cheerfully because it is a reflection of how God Himself has given the God who loves and gives. Those who have experienced this God reflect back to God in the way they live their lives, the way they give to our God. It's similar, by the way, to how we are as parents, right? We look, we look down at our kids and, uh, and we, we see us in them, right? And, and it, it brings what I would call parental pride, right? I and mean, we have it. It's just, it's just a fact. You see, when we give in a way that reflects God, He looks on us with an even greater amount of favor and blessing than we could ever have for our own children. Oh, that's one of mine right there. Look how, look how He's given with a joyful heart. See, He knows my love. See, He's, he's experienced my grace. Uh, he's seen the generous uh, God who gives He's received from the hand of God, and now he gives from his own hand. God loves the cheerful giver. God, by the way, he, God never gives thoughtlessly. God never gives accidentally. God never gives casually. When God gives, he gives out of pure love. He gives out of pure goodness. And it is no surprise that the greatest gift giver loves to see his children give like he gives. God loves a cheerful giver. Now you can know that when you give, and you give in a way that's from the heart, that follows this pattern of giving, that God looks down on you and he goes, that's beautiful. That's what I like to see. There's one of mine. 
because that's how he gives. That's how God looks at our giving. Well, I hope that you understand how we are to give our treasure because Paul makes it pretty clear. See, God has not blessed us with material resources so that we can somehow hoard them for ourselves, for our own purpose. God has given us resources to make an eternal impact on this world. And he wants us to give mindfully, passionately, willingly, and cheerfully to him. What kind of giver are you? Does your giving reflect the God who joyfully gives of his eternal resources to you? There is no salvation apart from our God who gives. There is no life apart from our God who gives. And the question is, when it comes to how we give, does our giving look like this? Will you pray with me today? God, you have been so good to us. God, you have not withheld any good thing from us. You have given us an abundance of goodness. You have given us your son. You have given us salvation by faith in him. And Father, we pray that, that as we look at our own life and we look at the resources that you've blessed us with, that our giving would be a reflection of how you give. So today, Father, as we think about this message, as we think about who you are, who we are, Father, I pray that you would turn our hearts towards you, that you would work in our lives, that you would help us to see your glory even in our giving. So, Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with us as we sing a song together today. I invite you to come and come to pray. Perhaps you're here today, and the thing that you need most is to experience that gift of God, which is salvation. You can only be received by faith. Don't hear me today saying that if you give enough money, then you'll be okay with God. That's not what it says, is it? You can't give enough money to be okay with God. Only the price paid by Jesus Christ himself on the cross can bring salvation. If you don't experience that today, all I Call out to Christ and be saved. Just believe on his name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. If you're here today, you know the question of giving may have something to do. I'm going to struggle with this. What will the Lord do with that? Start to measure up what, who you are with what God's word says. And, and, and if it doesn't measure up, then go to God. Say, God, forgive me. I have This is not the way I've been giving. Go before the Lord. If you're a Christian, then you have you already have an audience with the King. And if there's sin to confess, then confess it. And be reminded of the forgiveness that is given to you in Jesus. If you're here today and you're like, look, that's how I give. So well, great. I'm glad you give that. Well, keep giving that way. And there's always room to grow. Because let me tell you something, we can't be more generous than God. Amen? There's no one to the sun. So there's always room to grow in this. Let's sing this one.
blessed to be here today. I know I have. I'm glad to be here in the Lord's house with God's people worshiping the one true king. And I want to invite you to come back tonight. Uh, our elders are preaching through a series of messages um, on their favorite Bible verses and favorite Bible characters. Well, Jason's up tonight, so uh, he's going to be preaching on the Apostle John. So I hope you'll come back tonight at 6 o'clock and hear what um, Brother Jason has to share uh, share with us. And some of you may or may not know this, but the Elders Preaching Sunday Night has allowed for me to work with our young people on Sunday nights, so that's been pretty cool. And uh, what we've been learning uh, in a series called Authentic Love is about how uh, to have r the right relationships. And, uh, and that's going to culminate this weekend. Our guys are going to have a retreat. The girls are going to have a retreat. And so um, we're excited about that. So that's been really, really cool. But hope you'll come back tonight and be a part of that um, service. Let's uh, be dismissed as we close today. Father, we thank